All right. Looks like it did it again. Well, we'll see. All right. Well, we'll see where that goes. If it does it again, then we're just not going to be streaming. Until we figure this out. Okay, anyways, so. Yeah, and for anybody in chat right now who is talking about this as a situation, it, it happened twice, and it happened twice in OBS. I'm not even using Streamlabs. I literally, I, I uninstalled all the Streamlabs shit today. So it's gotta be Twitch. Anyways, I digress. Back to D&D. So. Doc. Um, so, uh, yeah, so basically, when we, well, when we did what we thought we were supposed to do, when we got rid of the bad guy, <laughs> uh, it released the actual or the bigger bad guy, I guess, um, and now he says he needs Gray's soul, and Gray only has three weeks to live. So. Yes, but back up. What do you mean by this bigger bad guy? I'm, I'm not understanding. Okay, so there was, so there was something inside in of Gray. Well, we, we so we killed Malthraxian. Like he came right. down, and, we're like, and we were like, and we beat the shit out of him, or her, and and then out of Malthraxian's fucking stupid corpse, this shadow monster fucking appeared it looked like a goat it had wings and horns and shit and it was like fucking now you all can't move Durr! and then you call it gray i never learned its name never needed to i call him goat fucker Well, seems appropriate. If he or it appeared to be goat, did it look like a goat all the way, or was it humanoid? Is there, um, sorry, description question. Is there, that's a candle or a lamp on the table, right? There's a, it's a there what is, did you say? There sorry. is fire in this room, correct? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there's two candles lit. Yeah. Then Aurora is going to cast Control Flames to create the vague outline of this, the vague yet very distinctive outline of the of his mentor. Okay. Um, Gray, may Gray looks like he's about to cast a spell. Then Aurora doesn't. He just stops. Make a uh, okay. <laughs> Aurora, make a. Mm, I'll let you choose either sleight of hand or performance. Oh, definitely sleight of hand. I was gonna say I have a sneaking suspicion. I know what's better, but yeah, I'm considerably more charismatic than I was as a half orc, but that doesn't mean that I'm that pretty. Okay. Yeah, you you make you you as you begin to bend and control the flames instead of like faking it until you make it and making it really grandeur, you really just focus on the fine details and you do an okay job of kind of giving the semblance of what this creature is and Xavier kind of like looks now out and over at you and he goes When did you Never mind. Um I forgot a couple questions for you too, Aurora. Uh Okay, so I believe what you're dealing with is a satyr. That creature appears to be a satyr. Um, not sure if any of you are familiar sure with it. So yeah, yes, yes. Well, at least that's what it looks like in the flame form. I wouldn't know unless I saw it in the flesh. Um, okay, so give me more details. Every anything, literally anything you have can help me help you figure out how to fix that shit. And he points at Gray's eyes. Because I have a sneaking suspicion he's on borrowed time, yeah. and him being around all of you and him being in public is going to draw attention and make people think that they're going to get sick or something. We obviously can't have that. You're already, You're already half of you are banned from one city. 
you are wanted in another. Let's not start the treachery here. Like, I, he I... threw some, like, black powder at him. And then all that happened. Okay, so maybe a disease or p potentially a curse of some sort. He was a caster of the at least a fairly high circle. He was able to freeze the moment so that only he was able to move within it. So, uh, oh, yes, yes, yes. Okay, so <clears throat> to make sure you are all feeling all right about this creature and that you're not going to go straight to your doom, that was a parlor trick of the Feywild. It is not a ninth circle of, of magic stop time or time stop spell. It Well, it may have been, but the odds of something that powerful dealing with, and no offense, something as insignificant as the four of you, just as a whole, would be very, very strange. Especially if he's from the Feywild. I know many Fey creatures who can, at least temporarily, freeze things around them. But it doesn't last very long and it taxes them greatly. So, could have been that. I mean, he didn't look very taxed. He seemed laughing. He was he was being kind of a dick. You said he monologued. Was there any useful information within the monologue, or was it all bullshit and bravado? There was some... I mean, there was useful information, so... Uh, he told us... Oh, he, he told us to where to find him. Right, he and uh, to find him. Yeah. Yeah. He, said, he told you flat out where to find him. That's yeah. so he well, wants you to. So he wants a fight. Is he what wants a, he wants a fight, or he has another trap set up because that was a trap when we when we went to fight Lothraxian. I mean, that was a fight or a trap, and I'm sure he's got another trap set up. But he told us. Um, so he wandered and was lost in the shadow fell. Um, this is while we we're all frozen in place. There's nothing we could do, or else he would have been very dead. He found a dragon, and um, it bound him in a prison of fear, doubt, and pain, which was Nothraxian. Um, he grew stronger in the pain and started reaching out through the weave to beings that were touched by darkness, and she'll kind of nod her head over toward Grey. He manipulated Grey, which he admitted to. Uh, and she's, like, looking at notes right now. Um, he's a dick. Convinced the Celestials to grab the Shadow Babies, uh, which were the, you know, the... Hungry, the angry, the wretched, all of those. The sorrow sworn. It's okay, we can call them by their actual name. Yeah, those. Um, he said that we are desperate for attention and rotten to the core. No, well, he's half right. He said that when we defeated Nothraxian, we released him. He needs Gray's soul. He threw a handful of black stones in Gray's face, which exploded. I don't know if that has to do with the condition around his eyes now. Um, I think I think it was because at that point his eyes started going dark. We're actually making really good progress with kind of bringing back the original Grey or whoever he was, and that's all gone. Um, three weeks before the touch of the shadow consumes him, the mentor will steal his soul. And he said we can visit him in the darkest of depths with obsidian spires, razor blades of glass. It was once called Ferentide by the Illithids. <laughs> you mean Ferentide? Yeah, that yeah. One. Do you know where that is? Oh, shit. Give me a moment. He reaches into a satchel at his side, kind of like a messenger bag that he's got, and he pops the top open, and he pulls three books out and sets them down. He moves the first one off immediately. The second one, he flips over, and you see a table of contents pop up. He scrolls through it, and then he closes it and puts it on top of the first one, flips the third one open, goes through a table of contents. He, his finger stops, and he kind of prods at it for a second, and he says, one moment flips all the way to the back and begins to kind of scroll his hand, his finger through. Okay. 
so there is some good news and some bad news here. I may have been mistaken by the initial assumption that this creature was a satyr, first and foremost. Second of all, if this creature, if this entity is actually at Ferentide in the Underdark, I do know where that is. I do know what Ferentide is, or was, anyways. I don't know why this creature would be there, but I might even have a name for it. If I'm guessing correctly. If you'd like to hear, I can tell you, but you have to bear with me as I kind of go through the choppy details. I mean, I like Goatfucker, but if he has a real name, I guess. <laughs> so, I think Goatfucker is exquisitory, and I think we should trademark that before somebody else gets their grubby little paws on it. Maybe I'll speak to my... I've got a friend, uh, actually one of the Timbers, who's in Middleton as a trademark specialist. Uh, works for the uh, government of Port Worland. Maybe we can get your name in a book, Ree. How about that? Sure. Yeah, cool. Uh, you said, <laughs> do you still think that it might be tied to the the Fae? Would speaking its name give it more anything? It's tough to say, but the good thing about, and he points around the room at the ceiling and the blue barrier, the good thing about this situation is that even if that were the case, names mean nothing here, which is why I wanted to have this conversation here and not somewhere else. So, with the description you've given me about this creature having goat qualities and the depiction you gave me in the flame, plus this information about its bravado laced monologue, I took these notes, and he kind of lifts the book up and sets it down. I took these notes when I was very, very young. Um, and this was with my own mentor as I was training in the scholarly arts. Um, in, in, they thought I was a wizard. They were very wrong. I was not meant for study. I was meant for nature. Um, but I digress. Uh, I took these notes when I was studying, and I studied the Underdark in some depth, to be quite honest with you, because it is one of the closest planes of existence to our own. First and foremost, Ferentide, with a T-H, Ferentide, is an, was at one point in time an illithid spawning pool at the northwestern base of the Obsidian Spire Mountains and surrounded by what is referred to as the Razor Plains. And it's called the Razor Plains because small shards of obsidian during the time of the first happening rose up and out of the ground like twisted, jagged razor blades. And it covered, I mean, miles and miles and miles of ground just outside of Therentide, which was, at one point in time, an illithid spawning pool. Now, if you're not familiar with illithids, they do not breed like normal sentient races breed. When a mommy goblin and a daddy goblin see it necessary to rebuild the numbers of the clan, they get together and midnight orgy, right? However, an illithid requires small leech-like creatures to be born into a pool via eggs. Those eggs dissolve into this briny mixture where they begin to gain psionic ability. Long story short, they then travel the plains, capture humanoid creatures, plant these little leeches inside their head, and within a couple of weeks, the leech eats its way from the inside out, and poof, new illithid is born. So, in the time of the first happening, so we're talking thousand years ago, even maybe before that, as the first happening began, the Illithids realized that not only was the prime material in peril, but so was the Shadowfell, the Feywild, 
and the Underdark, because they were the closest planes of existence to the Prime Material, which was the plane of existence being assaulted during the time of the First Happening, at least initially. So what the Illithids did is, now mind you, they had existed in Theron Tide for centuries, uh, and it was a massive spawning pool. They fled. They gathered as many of their leeches as they could, and they took to the stars, left on their living ships, and poof, they were gone. Now, what didn't change about Theron Tide was the Razor Plains, which, in my own studies, meant that it had stayed abandoned for probably the last thousand years or so, because who the fuck in their right mind, even, I mean... Even the Fomorian and the Dwergar and the Svervneblin are not quite desperate enough to traverse obsidian razor glass shardded plains for an old abandoned brine pool. At least as far as I was aware. Now, here's where it gets interesting. I had heard of a creature whose name is Mithliatora. Now, Mithliatora was a deep dragon. And if you're not familiar with dragons from other planes of existence, a deep dragon is an underdark dragon. They are gross, bulbous, typically pretty blind, but they're evil as shit, very cunning, as they've had to utilize other senses outside of raw sight, um, and innately very good at magic. So Mithliotora... At one point in time, I don't know where the creature came from originally, but the word has it that it had assaulted the Illithids prior to the days of the first happening and was banished from the Underdark. Now, when it was banished from the Underdark, we obviously don't know where it went, but there were rumors around the same time of a deep dragon in and or around the same location, but in the Feywild. So... I have a theory, and my theory is this. Mithliatora... Um, sorry. Yes. Uh, at, at this point, uh, I feel like Grey would just kind of uh, stand up, and he, he doesn't want to hear the name. Uh, or, like, if this is the story, he doesn't want to hear it. Because at this point, he just doesn't care and don't wanna, doesn't want to continue listening to his mentor. Uh... So I think you just kind of stand up and, I guess, walk out of the room. Okay. So you walk to the door, and the door is non-existent. There is a blue glowing barrier that was the door. Doc will turn to gray. Xavier stops and he says, Is it something I said? I, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear any more of him. Them. Yeah, whatever. So you feel a quiver in your soul when I say the name, so this is the creature. I don't know, but I don't want to know. Ray, if we're gonna fix it, we have to know everything. I know it's hard, but you you gotta help us here. Help us so we can help you. We're gonna have to face this asshole soon. So, I mean, whether whether or not you like to hear his name, we're gonna have to smack him in the face. Doc will scoot the chair next to her out and pat the seat and just look at him. Mr. Gray, I don't need to say his name anymore. I will simply bypass the details. There is pertinent information I think you should probably hear, especially considering your ailment. I think Aurora, while this is, while they've been focused on him, so like she slowly just releases her hand from the, uh, from the air that she hadn't even realized she had reached for, and just glances at Doc to make sure Doc hadn't noticed. If she'd be focused on Grace, she probably wouldn't have noticed, unless you want me to make a roll. Nah, no, it's alright. Um, as, as Kat, you're, uh, as Aurora's kind of, like, pulling her hand away, you, as, as you look down, you realize that your, your hand has been unintentionally controlling the flames this entire time and you have a small sphere in your hand kind of like have you ever seen those people with like the three silver balls and they just like swirl them around and around you've just been doing that mindlessly and as you look down you're like oh shit you should probably put that camera I, back 
I feel like she she might be a little intrigued by that because that is the most like she she wants to see if she can actually control it. So right. she's gonna fidget with fire a little bit because fire you, is, speaks to her. And as you do so, as you begin to just kind of fidget with it, like you look down, you kind of get surprised by seeing like the three balls kind of spinning. You kind of squeeze them together, and poof, they all shift into one larger ball and as you give it a squeeze it's got physical form and it's warm to the touch but it doesn't scald you and then you start to manipulate it and as you're manipulating it all you have to do is think and as you think and your your hand stretches open it's almost like a putty before it takes form into whatever little shape that you are going for yeah she this is going to be one meeting that she uses the fidget toys through <laughs> she's sitting there with the fidget spinner <laughs> fucking on fire Plus one flaming fidget spinner. <laughs> oh, I'm not happy about what we've done here. Plus one flaming Beyblade. <laughs> yeah, the fucking Beyblade. And this is your fault, and I'm running with it. Hey, I accept it. Um, okay, so yeah, he, uh, he but he, uh, Xavier does say though he's like, it, if you'd like, I can I can shift you outside the room, but I can't bring you back in until the conversation's done, or. You can hear the pertinent information I have, and I can bypass all the nitty-gritty details about this entity. Great, you should you should stay with us. You're not alone it's, anymore. Yeah. Bella just kind of turn and sit down, and then, I guess, not say anything. <sighs> so, where was I? I will not speak on this entity's name anymore, but for those of you who have taken note, I do believe this might be the same creature that I am thinking of. With that being said, I do have some good information, some good news anyways, about if this is how you'd like to pursue it. First and foremost, I... Mm -hmm, happen to know how to get to the Underdark. More than that, I know how to get you within probably two days or so of Ferentide. The bad news is that it will require you to travel down a... spectral river to get to the gate. And once you are at the gate, you can go through, but I've never been through said gate, so I don't know how the way back looks. But the good thing about gates to planes of existence are they usually work two ways. However, when you come back, there's a distinct possibility you might have to travel back down the Spectral River. What's so bad about that? That doesn't sound so bad. Well, it's, a river. it's a little bit more than a river -y. You see, a spectral river is not made of water. It's made of trapped spirits. Well, how does that work? That doesn't make any sense. Well, it's it, tough to explain magic, but the short of it is the Illithids, in the days of Ferentide's I want to say bloom, but that's not right. In in its heyday, we'll say, they needed a way to get to the Prime Material quickly without utilization of a nautiloid. That's the flying tentacle ships. In order to get here, to take captives back to experiment and make sure that their leeches were working correctly. So they built a gate. However, in order to make sure that normal entities could not get into the gate and surprise attack them in Ferentide, they bound spirits of their hosts, the bodies that they used to turn into illithids, and bound them into what is essentially a magical spectral river near the gate. So there might be angry spirits that you'll have to deal with. You might be able to talk your way through it. To be honest, I've never actually been downriver, except flying over once. The spirits are real, but I can also tell you that the gate is real. That, my friend, I am assured of. Um, with that being said, I can get you to the river, I can point you in the direction of the gate, and I can guarantee you that if you get through said gate, you will be within a two days walk of Ferentide. If you seek to fuck this goat bastard up, oh. 
goat fucker. Excuse me, if you want to destroy the goat fucker, um, that would probably be your best option. I do know of one other way into the Underdark, but it will take you probably three or so weeks to travel to Therentide from said location. I don't know, because it doesn't work. I'll let you discuss amongst yourselves. If you have questions, obviously I can take care of that, but uh, this is about what this I can do for you at now. Uh, for, right now, excuse me. Wait, did you say you flew over the river? Momentarily, and it wasn't by choice. It was a wild magic surge, and I went coursing over the river, and these large spectral tentacles kept trying to lash me out of the air. It was horrifying. Is there, like, a boat we can use? You can sure as hell try. I don't have a boat. I, I don't even. I mean, what kind of boat would? There's no way that a regular wooden boat would work, right? I'm maybe. I've again. Look, I'm not a boatier. I'm not a. I'm not a sailor. Do I have bedded many a sailors in my day? Uh, but I have no interest in sailing. Um, what I can tell you is that you could always follow the bank to the gate if you're interested however there's also a distinct possibility that the spirits become restless or angry and maybe they won't maybe maybe they will and you can talk your way to the i i, I tr look i don't know much more information i have no more information for you i wish i did this is very valuable and I, we don't mean to make light of what you've told us thank you it's more than we had before it's just all a little um overwhelming um, i listen i want to tell all of you something and i mean this seriously and from the depths of my heart when i first met you you were all nobodies do you understand me from that point until now which has only been a few months mind you You've not only managed to successfully get one of you slapped on the number one most wanted list in Middleton, but you saved a hamlet, you destroyed evil entities within the Sunless Citadel its fucking self, you traveled far to the east into the grove of the Circle of the Moon of all places, many, many, many people have dreamed and never even come close to the Circle of the Moon. You are welcomed in with open arms. You took care of many situations and issues that they had within the circle itself, traveled up to Underhill, where, again, a couple of you got yourselves in a lot of trouble in, but you saved the entire city. You did. You traveled far then to the northwest, and you not only took care of a, a, a major dragon issue, but you saved an entire village of goblins, befriended an entire encampment of hobgoblins, before then being allowed into the other circle of druids, the circle of the land. Befriended their leader, saved another friend of yours, before traveling down south to the swamp. Which, to be fair, your swamp adventure was probably your worst. No offense. But, uh, unfortunately, because of you, an entire village of people was slaughtered. So, it is what it is, but... Um, you have done so much in so little time that... Everything you do now is going to seem overwhelming. But I want you to know that I think you're capable. I think all of you are capable. And even if... This entity, Doc, Aurora, and Re, you all hear in your head, Mithliatora, is truly a deep dragon. You've only got one major fight ahead of you until you can kick your boots up and hopefully this thing has a treasure trove so deep you'll be able to just crawl into a whiskey bottle and never see your way out. How do you know all that stuff that we did, though? You were watching us the whole time? How is that even possible? We were bouncing all around this world. Let's just say... I have many friends in many places. Doc looks really sad when he says that. Actually, Actually there's, there's uh, more to tell you, too. Oh, boy. And what is that? 
the reason that we knew to reach out to you was, uh, and maybe it's not as, I, I don't know how well you knew this person, but, um, <laughs> does the name Zed ring a bell? Zed, 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 Zed. Um, the master of magic, he called himself. Oh, yes, yes, from the Circle of Celestials on Mount Celestia. Ooh, he was a handsome fellow, was he not? Not when we saw him. when we met him. Oh, that's unfortunate. Has he fallen from grace, too? No, he's just fallen. Definitely fell. Oh. He was on the ship. Oh, that's unfortunate. And he didn't survive. I liked him. He was a good enchanter. He was. He specialized in um, siege equipment enchanting and like weapon and armor enchantments but very very smart fellow but y yes anyways i met zed probably four or five times uh in my days training as an enchanter yes okay well i just want to let you know uh, he did tell us that you were his contact here because we were trying to figure out how to put everything together he you know once we found out that um he said i'm sorry you said his, i i am his contact here where is here in the greater point. realm of Oh, no. Makes sense. Not many people from the Celestial Realm. I, look, I travel a lot. Um, I have been to Mount Celestia before. Uh, I've also been to other weird realms, including the Shadowfell, the Feywild, and the Underdark. Do not like the Underdark or the Shadowfell. Too dark for my taste. Anyways, um, yes, when I was in Mount Celestia, I met Zed three or four times. And we have traded on numerous occasions. Um, Secrets of the Enchanting World. Which is how I'm capable of making so many beautiful items for people like you. Well, he did say, you know, so, I don't know how useful it is, but, you know, the High Celestials ordered him to go on this mission. Because we are trying to figure out who might have been contacted by you-know-who. Um, Let me just say this. Regardless of the plane of existence you are on, and how innately good they may seem, or how innately evil they may seem, or how lawful they are by nature, or chaotic they are by nature, or if they strictly adhere to naturality, bureaucracy is the bitch and the bane of all planes of existence. And regardless of where you're at, bureaucracy exists. So I guarantee you, Zed was probably told by the Circle of Celestials, or High Celestials, whatever the fuck they call themselves nowadays. Excuse me, I have no problem with Celestials, but I do have a problem with bureaucrats, and that's what they are. It's just like the Circle of Six in Port Sindrian. Love their work, hate their fucking structure. But that's the problem. Bureaucrats say, this is the best thing for us to do, or the best thing for you to do. What are you to do but follow orders or fall out of line? My guess is Zed probably didn't want to fall out of line, as they are the ones who fund his experiments and his study. Sorry, I got on a bit of a tangent there. Thankfully, safe space. <laughs> uh, yeah, so... Okay, I guess that makes sense. I just... Alright, so... The only lead we really have is this... Creepy river. I wish I had two leads for you. No, I no, could get you into the Underdark the other way, but again, if you're really on time crunch here, my guess is you probably want to go the quickest route. But... Oh, we do. We have one more stop before we do that, too, so the quick quickest route is the best oh, route. Oh, please, gods, tell me you're not going back to Underhill or Middleton. No. Oh, fair no, not likely. I mean, Gray's, Gray's faced death enough recently. Uh, this is more of a personal thing for Gray to use his time for. Um, and three weeks is plenty of time, so she takes a drink <laughs> at ale. As you take the first swig of ale. Gray, there is a sudden burst of psionic pain that kind of ripples across your brain. And you see hot white like you just got hit by lightning. 
and as the um, as the pain fades, you blink and you only see black around you. In the last three or four blinks, this image appears in front of you. And as soon as it appears, it is gone. And the pain subsides. And that's when I took a drink? That's when you took a drink. Okay. You guys didn't see that, did you? No. Okay, good. Gray, you saw that, right? Okay, good, 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 good. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> so I think, nod. Yeah, okay, so I think uh, just for the, the humor side of it, because uh, playing... Solemn Gray isn't always fun. <laughs> uh, the second Doc takes a sip, uh, I'd like to think that the timing is exact, that she'll take, like, swallow, and then she'll just hear from the side, Ah, fuck! And then, like, Gray holding his eyes. She'll put her cup down and scoot it away from her a little bit and look over at Gray. I kind of want to take another drink. I don't think you should. I don't think so either. You okay? <laughs> He's messing with me again. Should he be able to do that in here, Xavier? I'm afraid I've said his name three times. He can now penetrate the pit. <laughs> I'm just fucking with you. <laughs> Could you imagine if that's how it worked? Is there anything on the table that's not like a knife or a fork? That yeah, I there's like help? there's like bread and cheese. There's also a bottle of wine. Just crack him across yeah, the head I'm with the throw bottle. Bread at him. Yeah, so you throw <laughs> bread at him. He kind of like catches it and brushes it off. He says, ah, "No, um, I kid. Um, no, he should not. We are protected by scrying, right? Well, unless, unless it's the eyes." Do you think maybe it's possible he has a direct connection to Gray? He threw Gray. those rocks in his face and they exploded. I mean, who knows what that was? Well, what's with the, the this illness is what I've heard that's been following these fallen vessels. Whatever is going on with his eyes. Gray, if needed to right now, do you feel like you could step into the shadows in this room? And translocate uh. yourself? And, uh, Lucy, the answer is yes. I have not- I'm actually literally in the process of creating your magic item. Um, that will be in your inventory, I promise you, in the next 20 minutes. Okay. Um, I was gonna check, because I have Shadow Jaunt in my notes, um, like, word for word now. Yeah, it, it is Shadow Jaunt, yes. It. It, it is Shadow oh. Jaunt. Uh, the one I have is dodging, just dodging an attack. Okay, so the other one that you have then would be, so, Shadow Charge is the one that I, so, there, actually there's two, I'm sorry, there's Shadow, there's Shadow Jaunt and Displacement. The one that you have is Displacement. Shadow Jaunt is the one where you would step into a shadow and teleport 40 feet. Okay, then I, I misnamed mine in notes. Uh, I guess I'll, I'll try. <laughs> Yeah, so you activate one of your shadow charges, and um, as you do so, um, Aurora is, like, in the process. She's kind of, like, throwing this, like, uh, almost, like, juggling ball-sized ball of fire like a cat back and forth on the table. It's not burning the table. She's controlling it, like, ever so perfectly. And as the shadow creeps across and you see her hand, you reach your finger out, and as you dip it into the shadow of her hand... You guys see Gray's entire body, like a Pokeball almost, just transforms into Black Shadow and and vanishes inside of Aurora's hand shadow. Uh, shadow's... Her hand's shadow? Hands yeah. Shadow. From there, behind Xavier, <laughs> rising up out of the, sh the staff shadow, comes Gray's body and then sh materializes. And it's all within like four seconds. Oh, wow. That was a neat trick. Okay, uh, right. Gray will kind of look at his, his own, like, hands, um, not expecting it to actually do anything. Uh, and then go. You have just let me die three weeks. I had to go over the top again. 
What good would that do? Go sit down. Oh, um, it's just a side effect of the disease. Xavier kind of pipes up and he goes, Here's the thing. He's doubling down. It, they, she, I actually don't know what this thing identifies as, but whatever the fuck it is, has doubled down. It's done two things that I don't think it thought through all the way. Correct me if I'm wrong. One, it infected Grey with a disease or a curse or something, a poison, that it claims within three weeks will kill him. That created a time limit. Two, it told you where it was going. It wants you there. The question now is why? Because there are a couple of options here. One, it was a false flag play on its end, meaning it wanted Grey to feel sorry for himself to the point where he said, just kill me now. Or, maybe it assumed Grey would kill himself immediately. immediately. Or, it wants you to go there because it wants more than what Grey is currently afflicted with. Maybe it wants all four of you. You are all strong-souled individuals, regardless of how many times you've died and come back. Again, think about the breadth of your capability. Doc... You started as a petty thief, grew into a professional fucking assassin, and then turned your back on that initial lifelong faith to follow in the ways of a Glitterbrite. And now, within weeks, something some priests require decades to achieve, you can bring the fucking dead back to life. Maybe it knows just how powerful you are, and it thinks it can defeat you. And in turn, maybe snatch your souls up for something else it's got going on. Question is, well, need, what do you do with, do it? You do with it? Well, I, we need to go after him anyway, because he has Meepo. That's true. Aurora, like, freezes at that. And, and as she like, freezes, like, literally, her whole body locks in place as if she had just frozen over. You guys see the little bouncy ball of flame in her hands stop dead center, and in a wave of ice kind of cascades out from Aurora's right hand and encompasses the ball of fire, which then snuffs it out. Okay. So, I, 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 all I'm saying is, 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 yeah, it definitely sounds sketchy as fuck, and he he wants us to go there to kill us, trap us, whatever. But we need to get Meepo back. We do. Just, and we know, need to need see Ray. Yeah. Okay. Um. No, this is fine. It's fine. We'll, you know, just go do it, right? That's what we do. Yeah. Pretty much. That's what That's we do. What we... And listen, the whole thing about starving for attention. I don't know what the fuck that's all about. Uh, that, right. you, know, you know, he's he wasn't really that wrong about that. He he wasn't wrong about that. Um for some of us, yeah. Um Okay. So let's just think it through here because do we know does this um specific type of dragon uh does it have any specific weaknesses that we could use to our advantage, by chance? Why doesn't everybody give me a history check? As you are asking that, you can just figure it out yourself. 
Um, I, 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 I also want to reflect the invert on that and say, um, but I'm going to do it very deliberately. Um, I would like to say um, just mentally that looks like yet another dragon is taking what is ours or has taken what is ours. Do you know anything that might assist? Aurora, give me a charisma check. Actually, no, you know what? Just give me a persuasion check. Oh, that's not Come good, Reed. You are way better at stealthing. <laughs> not a clue. <clears throat> well, take a 19. Okay, that's not bad. Um, so, Aurora, as you do that, go ahead and make your history check with advantage. Because there are secrets and whispers that are being dripped into your mind, but it's happening very, very fast. Almost like like a like a, a bonfire that just got hit with a fucking gallon of gasoline. <laughs> and you're trying to take it all in. 17, okay. And what about you, Lucy? I'm not seeing your roll. I'm guessing you're rolling slow. Uh, no, I don't, I don't think Gray would okay, fair try enough. to recall anything. Okay. So... Doc and Aurora. You both recall bits of information about deep dragons. First and foremost, deep dragons are extremely rare. They are literally... Um, they are dragons that are disgusting, blind, kind of like the naked mole rat of dragon kind. They don't follow a true chromatic or um, metallic scale um they're typically like leathery bat wing fleshy looking like not even really scaly so much as like spiny in nature um and they are also uh they're also much less dragonoid in head shape and much more baby bird do with that what you will I want to do nothing. Um, on that note, they are... Uh, this is for Doc. They are extremely strong, physically. They are extremely hardy. They are extremely intelligent, wise, and even more charismatic. They are masters of manipulation because they have nothing else. They are innately capable of casting very high forms of illusion magic. This is just for Doc. And Doc, they are absolutely 100% resistant to poison and psychic effects. Now, for the both of you, you know for a fact that they are immune by their sight. The, the psychic connection they have to reality um, makes them completely immune to being charmed, frightened, or poisoned. Because of where they exist naturally, they have what's called blind sight, which you too would recognize as something called perfect vision, meaning that they can close their eyes and they can smell and hear or feel in the ground exactly where you're at, within a, a, a certain distance. Further than their blind sight, they do have extreme dark vision, like quadruple what a drow could see in the dark. They are also creatures of, I as far as the Underdark is concerned, of legendary status, meaning they are capable of, on occasion, performing feats of legendary status that other creatures could only dream of. Um, their breath, which is something that all dragons have, um, is not a normal dragon breath. Instead, they exhale a cloud of spores, of, like, fungi spores. And those fungi spores, they, they get into your pores and into your orifices, your facial orifices, and they attack your psyche directly.
you also the only last bit of information you know is that they are capable of walking, digging underground, flying, and swimming with the exact same level of ease. They are terrifying fucking creatures. Sounds awful. That sounds very awful. <laughs> Join the next three weeks, wait asshole. <laughs> yeah, you just don't want to wait out the three weeks. <laughs> Yeah, you guys are just like, you know what, fuck it, we're just gonna call this thing's bluff and wait for three weeks. <laughs> that kind of sits and reflects, starts to go for her drink, and then stops herself. Okay, that's right. Um, I think I remember hearing and reading and... Uh-oh. ...things about this. Ugh. This is not going, going to be easy. Just, just as a, as a, as a, as a note, Re probably has been sipping on her ale pretty much the entire time. It's awesome. Give me, Give me a me Constitution a saving throw. As you get about now that you've mentioned it, and during this conversation, which has been going on for about an hour now, um, as Re is kind of like sipping and you know we're talking and having a good time, and she's just kind of mindless. She's maybe even filled it up once or twice. Suddenly. You burp. Like, holy shit. Is that cinnamon? And you look in the ale and you take a deep inhalation. This bitch cut the best ale in this house with fire belly. And you succeed nice. at your constitution saving throw. You feel the warm, euphoric wash of fire belly as you as the dawning realization, like, holy shit! It's a little bit of both worlds. I fucking love it. Uh, okay. Uh, so, th yeah, this is not going to be an easy fight. But I think if we prepare, we'll be fine. Well, how do you... How do we... How do we prepare? Just, like... All the healings we can get? The yeah. same way you prepare for any hunt. I mean, you hunt for, you hunt differently for different things. I mean, you trap a rabbit, you shoot a deer, you know. Yes, yeah. and do you do you go out without a quiver full of arrows for either? Well, the rabbit and the deer can't usually hear everything you're saying before you you know get trap or shoot them. So just kind of look over toward Gray. I think that um, we do need to plan very carefully. I think that we need to make sure we are using all of our resources to the best of our ability because what they lack in dragon looks, they make up for in literally everything else. Gray, your inventory has been updated. It's at the very top of your equipment sheet. It's called Gray's Dark Heart, and it will have, if you click on it, it will show you your charges. It's a charge. It's a chargeable magic item that weighs zero, but this is just like something inside of you. Um, you are currently T1. You can only use T1 abilities. I will let you know as things change. Okay, I, am, I apologize, guys. I'm trying to think through, too. I mean... I don't know how it would work. Would would it have to come back to this plane to get the soul? Or do we really need to go to its lair? Xavier says... It depends on... It, the problem is we don't know exactly what is inflicting Mr. Grey. If it has already touched him in a specific way, so let me explain it like this. If a devil makes a deal with a humanoid creature on the prime material, and the deal is as simple as, I will give you great wealth. However, when you die of old age, I get your soul. That devil does not need to return to the bedside of the person that he made the deal with in order to collect the soul. It simply happens when the person's deal comes to fruition. So, it could be that 
the same thing has happened here with Mr. Gray, where when Mr. Gray is snuffed out of existence because the d disease or curse or whatever it is has overtaken him, his soul simply travels to the point in which it was bound by this entity. The three of you that I, I mentioned earlier, here in your head again, Mithliatora. Gray, you do not hear that. Um, or maybe it can't do that. And we're all wrong, and it's just tempting you to come there because it would be easy enough for it to snatch the soul up once it's there. Also, and I mean no offense, Mr. Gray, you are beautiful at what you do. I've I've heard the performance tales from from Underhill. I I know what you're about, but are you really that special for this thing to need your soul? Like, is this something? within you that maybe we're not all aware of? Is there some secret that you're hiding of great power that would make your soul of use to an entity that would use souls as a bartering chip or fuel? We, yeah, I mean, to be fair, we don't know anything about you before you were fallen. Can you share anything? Honestly, I, I have no idea. As far as I'm aware, I'm just a loser. Okay, what did you do before you were a loser? I traveled with a band of performers. Did you? Were you known for before any that? Songs or anything? Did you? Did you leave your mark somewhere in specific that you know? Not really. We traveled around this area, just performing. Maybe. No, I, we just performed. Uh, the rest of steel and small well, steel. They. During performances, they take what they can. Before that, I... Oh, I, I believe that is definitely called theft, yes. No, you were right, stealing. Well, think of it this way. It, this guy was, you know, you spent more time with him than anybody. You know, we've only had those few glimpses and the really creepy voices, but... What would he want any soul for? Let's not just say yours, but any soul. Why did he want Meepo? Why, you know, think like him for a minute and, and help us. Well, you heard him. He said Meepo was what he needed to get an Althraxian, the power to pierce through our aurora. Right. So does he just use souls to power more fucked up shit to break through? Like, is is like... That's a distinct possibility. Look, souls are very, very powerful bargaining chips. Um, and souls do... A creature's soul, especially depending on how powerful it was in life, has a lot of energy. That energy is used to fuel things like infernal engines in the hells, which is why devils and demons use them as trading chips, which is why devils very intentionally try to take mortal souls as currency from mortals with deals that typically don't go in their favor because it is used in great demon and devil wars and battles and it's just all about power. The soul holds the key to great power. And some creatures just like to literally consume them. Liches, for example. On the rare occasion you ever meet a lich, I guarantee you it's consumed at least a dozen souls, if not more, in order to obtain the power that it has. And it does so because it knows that within that soul, great power is untold. What, uh, who did you worship before you fell, Gray? I, I know we kind of talked about it before, and now everything's out. So, who did you worship before you fell? Okay. You lose a second so I can pull that up again. Lucy's like, God damn it, Moradine? Really? No, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, All right. That point, guys. Going back to Underhill. <laughs> Living out the last of my days. While Gray is uh, contemplating his prior religious experiences, Aurora is going to just kind of turn her head to look at Xavier. What else occurred at the Obsidian Spire besides just the breeding ground for the illicit? The, at, at the Obsidian... Oh, you mean the Obsidian Spire Mountains in the Underdark? Yes, um, I don't... No, I, that is not exactly my hunting grounds. 
You know what? That's that's fair enough. Um, give me a moment. Uh, he kind of he pushes the uh, the tray to the side in the center of the table, and he draws with his fingernail, kind of like drags it into the wood, and cuts out this big um, rectangle. He lays his hand on the table, and as he whispers this incantation, is you see um, his his hands almost or his uh, nails kind of grow outward and do this hook, almost like a vulture claw, and he pulls this. Um, image up and out of the table and it appears like this now very reminiscent to what you guys know as the shape of trubin shard that is right the underdark looks very very similar and and the the notations here are notated so he rise he pulls this image up and he points um up here in whoops shit you know what hang on i might have to uh i might have to do this a different way to give you guys notations oh hey i have a way to give you guys notations hold on check this out god i thought ahead oh i thought ahead god i love myself sometimes i don't know when the fuck i did that but apparently i was thinking ahead uh okay so the underdark so he says so the obsidian spire mountains uh, just over here. That's the Obsidian Spire Mountains. Now, Mithliatora, uh, excuse me, whoop, that's the name I shouldn't have said, Ferentide. Ferentide is right about here. And the... The Razor Plains are... Right there. So, if you look at this from a, st a strategic standpoint, you can see just how useful this little nook in the mountains could be for something like... Illithids, right? They have a place for their breeding pools and their brine pools. Mountains at their backs. Massive mountains, obsidian mountains. And directly in front of them for miles and miles and miles and miles. All the way to the Grellian entrance. Which, by the way, has been closed off for 500 years. Um, are fields of razor glass blades jutting up from the ground. There's no reason for any creature to ever come to this point. Um, so, this is pretty much what I can tell you as far as that is concerned. Um, Aurora, your question was, what did Therentide, like? What, what was the significance of Therentide beforehand? I don't know history prior to the Illithids taking it over. What I can tell you is that um, Alacromi which is just on the western side of the um, Obsidian Spire Mountains, is home to a very powerful society of... Um, of um, uh, what the hell are they called? Yonti. Snake people. So that's an entire civilization, I mean literally, we're talking tens of thousands if not hundreds of thousands of Yonti that exist within Alicromi. Down in the Tower of Ningatu, that is where there is said to be an Elder Brain. An Elder Brain in Illithid society is essentially the command center of all of their troops and armies and the central hub. It's where the, the center of their hive mind exists. That's within the Tower of Ningatu. I highly suggest staying far the fuck away from there. My thoughts would be if he was trying to form a direct link to him. If using something from the area may have helped form that like dark dark shards getting blown in his face coming from and telling us to go to an obsidious obsidian mountain she just kind of shrugs i don't know it seems somatic 
seems that way, but I'm not sure it's... Well, maybe. I don't know. Never met the creature myself, so it's tough to he, say. He, he had an ego bigger than Gray's, so could have all just been setting the stage for things. Distinct possibility, for sure. Uh, so, I, I went through all the, the gods and stuff, and Xavier's uh, rules and shit. Uh, sh sheet, I sent my match sheet. Fuck my shit, I guess. Okay, you're welcome. <laughs> you're welcome for a fully fleshed out world, you asshole. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, and I think the most likely, uh, I will go back, because I know we mentioned it uh, a bit back, and I will go back and see if I can find what I exactly said. But I think at the moment, Illidamara would probably be the closest. I'm almost uh, positive, music, Lucy, that rebels, you and... wine, rogues, humor, and tricks. I am almost positive you and I had a full-blown conversation about Illidamara. Yep. So yeah, I, I remember. I remember that you you mentioned two during that whole thing of which god degree. You mentioned two specifically for music, and I cannot remember what the other one is. I'm almost positive it was Alitamara and Yandala. Yandala uh, is goddess of bards, halflings, music, revelry, joy, yada yada. But I think okay. I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure Alitamara was your was your shtick. Yeah, I know. I. I Sounds about right. Uh, I didn't think of Yondala because uh, on the sheet it says halflings, trickery, food, and willpower. <laughs> That's where it is. Fair enough. Could yeah, it's have most likely Corell and Lorathian couldn't have been for music, art, stuff like that. Could have been Corellian Lathurian, yep. Because that's that's Sybils. <laughs> One of Sybils. Cool god, too. God of the elves. All right. It's definitely not that one. Yeah, no. I, I'm, I'm almost positive it was Litamara. Um, okay, so either way, a Litamara is what Gray says. Is that correct? Because that's the, I guess, the widespread religion in our, mm -hmm. in our troop. Okay. That's what okay. okay. Um, all right. I, I mean, is there any reason that you know, a creature like that would want a soul that technically belongs to Litamara. I stopped worshipping her long, a while matter. ago. It doesn't matter. It, you fall, you fell, right? You fell, but it doesn't mean that you can't rise again. You're still hers if you want to be hers. And if you don't, you're his. There's not a whole lot of gray area when it comes to souls. So, as you say that, Xavier blinks heavy a couple times and he goes, That's an extremely wise thing to say, Doc. And she's right, by the way, Gray. <clears throat> Devils don't deal in neutrality. They seek out the most depraved of the depraved, or the most high of the high. They seek paladins to corrupt and make deals with, or they seek the warlocks and necromancers of, of the Shadow Realms. It's always one extreme or another, because they know those people are so hellbent and devout in their own faith, that their souls must be strong within. Neutrality is but a fucking puff of smoke as far as that's concerned. So there must be something special about you. Doc, it's a very good point. So, Gray, I mean, you don't have to answer now, but reflect and think. You know, there has to be something that stands out from your past. There has to be something. You don't you don't have to answer now. Give it thought. We've got time. Not much. No, it doesn't feel like it's much. But if you need me, I will not go anywhere. As far as we are concerned, I know I can get you within two days walking time if you hug the Obsidian Spire Mountains. Where I can get you in will be a two days walk. So if you are going to risk it 
risk it for the biscuit, as they say, and get down to the wire. I will stay here for the next couple of weeks if that's really what you want to do. Obviously, I'd rather you not, because I do see something special in all of you, and if this is truly a means to a final end, I'd like to see it happen. I was tasked with saving Grey, and I'm going to do that, or I'm going to die trying, so... Xavier looks surprised. By who? Garl? That's where it started, I won't lie. I, I didn't care for Grey very much, but he's grown on me. You've spoken for your god? To <laughs> your god? Yeah, we were hanging out in a field one time when I died. Oh, you all need to fill me in on your adventures. I've only heard the rumors that have come through the mill and the mill and the mill and down the river and through the woods to grandmother's house they go. I want to hear of your adventures from you now. Sorry, this ale's hitting me awfully strong. <laughs> Is there fucking... Oh, fuck me. She put fire belly in the ale. Oh. That's great. That still doesn't really explain why when I drink, Grey gets a headache, but I'll, I won't drink. It's okay. Um, yeah, so basically long and short of it is one of the times that I died, uh, I think we were, I think we were in Underhill, is that where we were? Anyway, uh, one of the times that I died, um, I got to meet Garl, and he's as cool as you would expect him to be, honestly. I'd not expect him to be any cooler or less, to be totally honest with you. Well, you know the Timbers, right? Oh, I know the Timbers, but I don't believe in the gods, so... Well, it's not the... No, I take that back. I, I know the gods exist, I just... I can't pick a favorite, because, you know, sorcery and all that. Sure. Um, well, honestly, it felt like... It just felt like a reunion with, like, an uncle. You know, it was just... Well, good thing it wasn't the creepy uncle, because I've had a few reunions with those, and they're not friendly. No, he wasn't creepy. Okay, good. <laughs> he was the cool uncle. Oh, excellent. Yeah. Oh, so he snuck you alcohol when you were not of age. He might as well have. But not the creepy uncle that also asked for too long of hugs. All right. right. Anyways, um, wonderful. Well, good. I'm glad you had... Con I'm just blown away. The number of people I've had a conversation with that have actually spoken with their deity... Yeah. Three, actually, I can tell you exactly. It's all on one hand. Three. Yeah. Yep. He, and, uh, but he did, he, um, and, and like I said, you know, I was in diff sorry, Gray, but I was indifferent for a while, and with a nudge from Garl, I realized that there is good in you. There's, it wasn't that I didn't like Gray, it wasn't that I didn't think you could come back, I just didn't think you cared, and I, and I still think you didn't. Um, but Garl clearly knew that something was coming, because he knew that Grey could be saved, and when I started to do soul-searching of my own and kind of watching and listening to Grey, pretty much solidified it, and it became not only a mission from my god, but also a personal mission about somebody that, um, has grown on me and that I, I care about, so... She's purposely avoiding making eye contact with Gray right now because she knows that he's probably horribly uncomfortable. Aurora, no, Lucy, Lucy is because he really wants to make a joke, but Gray cannot. <laughs> <laughs> um, That's what you get for bringing seriousness to your fucking character. I know, I hate it. <laughs> I want to be the joke. No, um, half of that is my fault, and I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I, I fucking love it. Um, I don't think Gray would even look at you, uh, to be honest. I think he's just kind of staring dead ahead. And if nothing else, the, all the rest of us are all too fucking stubborn to let this creepy voiced asshole win, so... I'd like to point out it, that it's above Aurora, <laughs> because her head height is just not enough. <laughs> Poor Aurora. I have to make a joke, damn it. <laughs> um, she might not even notice, honestly. So, at <laughs> so at this point, Xavier um, 
he uh, he he takes another big swig of his ale and he kind of sets uh, sets the uh, cup down, grabs the carafe, pours a little bit more. He pours out the rest of the cups, and he lifts his cup up and he kind of nods to all of you and he says, "In my time, I have I have seen many groups of adventurers, from." Little folk to gigantic folk, from here to there, from all over Trinity. Um, to Trubinshard, to the Wildlands. I've seen and done so much. But when I first met you, I kid you not, you were the most unlikely group of fucking heroes I think I've ever met in my entire life. And with what you've done so far, and where you are on track to complete, what you are on track to complete, I just want you to know that I'm very proud of you. So cheers to you. You tell me what you want and when you want it, and I will get you to within two days of Therentide, I guarantee it. Until then, if you'd like to sleep, rest, whatever it would be, no problem. If you've money to spend, the shop's open, baby. I brought my bag. And the better thing is, if you've got anything you need identified or looked at or touched or tickled, winks at Rhi, I can do that too. <laughs> Doc, Wait, you look what? strangely you taken aback. You're going to tickle? What? What are you going to tickle? Technically, I can tickle anybody. By the way, he's failed two constitution saving throws at this point, so <laughs> he is not doing good. Aurora, who has not touched a drink um, during any of this, just reaches for the bag of holding and starts just setting stuff on the table. Because she's like, if we're doing this, we're fucking doing this. Xavier glances over and he's just like, oh, looks like we have a taker. <laughs> oh, give me a minute, I need my monocle. And he reaches onto his, uh, his leather harness. He grabs this ruby and as he pulls the ruby out, it mater- it like... It vanishes for a moment and then rematerializes as a glass monocle. And he puts it in his eye and begins to glance down at things. What? What? Do, what am I looking at? Is this? Is this magic? Okay. So the first thing she pulls out is the ten foot long wooden pole, which would be comical for her to pull out of this bag since it is three times her height and then some. So she Mary Poppins that onto the table. Yeah, so that like um, that stretches all the way out along the table, like almost pokes Doc in the head, and he looks down at it and he's like, "Oh, well, that's a thing that you have here. Yeah. Why do you have a rod in your bag? Why is it... I'm, ooh, I'm sauced. Well, she also she pauses at that." reaches into a pocket, not the bag of holding, reaches out into a pocket and pulls out a vial that is labeled, uh, I believe I still have it, let me double check. Yeah, that's labeled Quicksilver and just offers it. He, he kind of takes it, he looks at the side and he goes, all right, pops the cork on it, he swigs it back, he finishes slide. it, he uh, hands you the vial, and he kind of sits up straight. He burps once. That is, like, unnatural. It's like one of those, like, <clears throat> and as he kind of blinks, he goes, I am so sorry for my behavior. Was it really necessary for the quick set? Was, it, was I at that point? We have three weeks. I thought it was pretty funny. Understood. Honestly, Jack I'm not sure around. how I would have gotten this barrier down. <laughs> Sorry, Doc looks that. around kind of uncomfortable and he asks if it's uh if it was really necessary. She kinda of like her eyes dart over to Aurora and then do a little roll and then look back the other direction. Yeah, Aurora has like no humor in this moment. She is she is not doing the, the happy half thing thing. She is very business like here. Um so she says that we had three week or we have three weeks. And then Next to the uh, ten foot long wooden pole, she pulls out the tog medallion, um, the polished stone cat head, and the potion that looks like liquid iron. Okay, so he um, 
he performs an incantation over all of this. And uh, who had the clockwork amulet? I did. That was you. Okay. That's yeah. The, it's just yeah, okay. I just I wanted to make sure. Five medallion. Okay. So I'd like to pull out my heart for him to inspect that. Oh no, we can go. Let's do it. All no, right. So uh, I'd like to keep my shadow. <laughs> yeah. No. So yeah, that. By the way, Lucy, it's not an actual item. It is just that. That's just me. Yeah, Instead I of figured. having to create like a feat or a feature, because they're so much harder to make for a character class. Because I have to like rebuild the class and then build it into it. It's a pain in my ass. So you just get an item with charges. Um. Okay. You mean there's not something for me to carve out of his uh, chest with an icicle? He's oh, always bleeding no, out. there, there yeah. definitely it is. It's called heart. his heart. <laughs> you know that'll work. It's called his heart. Cut that shit out. Um, okay, so Xavier begins to in a very. Uh, oh, I'm I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead. I'm, uh, she's also putting down the ornate ceremonial dagger that keeps lighting on fire, okay. sporadically. So. Going, uh, I'm just going to do this in the order that I have them in. So the first one he touches is the amulet. And as he picks it up, and just as a reminder, this is the amulet that he showed. Or that you guys picked up. The clockwork amulet. So this is a copper amulet that contains tiny interlocking gears and is powered um, by some sort of magic. And he says flat out, oh, this is interesting. This is powered from... Magic from the plane of Mechanus. Have you ever heard of Mechanus before? It's, oh. it's a plane inhabited by clockwork creatures, given sentience but run on physical things like cogs and springs and sprockets. It's very interesting. Um, um. So, if you put this to your ear, you'll be able to listen to it and obviously hear the uh, ticking and the whirring noises that are from the interworkings of these cogs that are that are happening here. Um, however, whoever contains this, um, whoever contains this amulet, whoever wears it, whenever you are attempting to strike a creature, the magic infused in this allows you to do the following: when you attempt to strike a creature, instead of allowing chance to make the strike be known you instead strike perfectly average every single time but it can only be used once per day and just for those of you who are interested this is the clockwork amulet it's a common wondrous item when you make an attack roll while wearing the amulet you can forego rolling your d20 to simply take a 10. Full stop. And it cannot be used until the next dawn. You still get to add your bonuses, but instead of rolling a, t a, tw a d20, you just take 10. How does that work with advantage, disadvantage stuff? Does it just bypass all of that? Bypasses all of it. If you have advantage or disadvantage, you just roll a 10. Flat out 10. Which is very beneficial if you know you have disadvantage. Right? Because both of your rolls would be 10. So, that's the clockwork amulet. I'm really interested to find out what that pole was. <laughs> Comical 10 foot pole. Oh, this pole! Oh, this is an interesting thing. Look at this. Oh my goodness. Yes. So, this... This... Beautiful rod... Is... Uh, typically a ten foot pole. But according to the incantation I can see on the side here... When you speak the command word, which is... Here, fishy, fishy... It transforms itself into a fishing pole with a hook... A line and a reel. And if you want to change it back into a normal 10-foot pole, you just speak the command word, Here, fishy, fishy. And he picks the pole up and goes, Here, fishy, fishy. And sure as shit, the pole, in a burst of arcane magic, unfurls. It, like, unravels into a 10-foot fishing pole. 
um, with with a line, a hook, a bobber, all sorts. I mean, the full fucking shebang. And he hands it down to you, Ri. Ha! Interesting. Interesting. Uh, that's fucking neat. Yeah, I feel like Doc's eyes would light up, like, with wonder. She'd be like, oh my... That's cool. Wow. Nice. Okay, so whoever, take, whoever takes that, that is the pole of angling. Does anybody actually really want this? Because Re, Re's pretty excited about it. Doc would see her excitement and not even try. Oh, oh yes. Nice. There you go. All right, so he, he picks up the um, the metallic... Um, there was the metallic container, right? There was a... You put the metallic container down on the uh, table... Aurora. Um, I don't know if I had a metallic container. What, I was, had... what was the potion thing you put down? Did you say oh, a potion, the potion thing? That... Yep, potion that looks like liquid iron. There we go, there we go. Okay, so, you set it down. And he looks at it, and he says, I don't even need to cast Identify. I can actually tell you, just because I have some experience with alchemy, what this is. Um, this is an oil of slipperiness. Um, so, uh... The short of it is, um, if you were to cover somebody, uh, at least gray size or smaller, uh, along with all of their equipment, um, then, <clears throat> it, which obviously would take, I'd say, easily 10 minutes because it's an oil, um, the affected creature is essentially immune to being grappled by things for, I'd say, easily 8 hours, or... You can pour this liquid onto a ground, and it will have the same effect as a grease spell for about eight hours. So, uh, for uh, clarification's sake, if you apply the oil to a creature of medium size or smaller, they are affected by the spell Freedom of Movement for eight hours. Or, you can pour it onto a 10 by 10 square, and it counts as a grease spell for eight hours. So that is an oil of slipperiness. Whoever wants to take that, just out loud claim it now so that we can uh, determine whose inventory it's in. Aurora would push that towards uh, towards Bree, who keeps getting, you know, grabbed by things. Oh, yeah, I'll take the special grease. <laughs> Bree's just going to fucking lotion it. up before a fight. <laughs> Don't oh, drink it. Oh, gonna, oh yeah. Move myself up here real quick. Ah. You either lube yourself up and gain freedom of movement, you pour it on a 10 by 10 and gain grease, or you drink it and gain magnesium citrate for the next 8 hours. And if you don't know what that is, you should look it up. That's diarrhea it's juice, by the way. Oh. <laughs> Oil that, slipperiness, that's right, man. <laughs> that, yeah, magnesium citrate. It's the shit you drink before you get a colon cleanse. Alright. Colon cleanse. Enough about colons. Super colon blow. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> That's SNL. That is SNL fucking charm from a long time ago. Way back in my day. Oh man. I love it. Oh my god, if I if I combine the potion of growth and the oil of slipperiness, my god. You're like a giant, giant fish. fish. I'll just be oh and oh ooh, and and I use the fishing rod to catch yourself. To catch myself? That doesn't make any sense. I like I'm gonna find a way how to up. use all these in one in one combat. Don't forget, Josa has to factor into that. Oh, says cat, right. not the Just fucking ride, Josa. Are you kidding me? Drink the uh, potion. Josa's doing the fishing. Yeah, you you lube the oil, drink the potion, ride the Josa, sling the pole. <laughs> yep, combo. So there I was in the underdark, slinging a fly a fly fishing rod into the underdark pools while riding on the back of a giant lightning goat, enlarged and slick as shit. Rolling nothing but tens. Rolling nothing but tens. <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn it. Thanks, I hate it. Are you keeping the clockwork thing? I love like it. That? Um, does someone reach for it? 
Not necessarily. Like, Doc has her eyes on it, but it, honestly, it's just because it's clockwork. In that case, because I may or may not have a plan for later, she is just going to kind of put her tiny little halfling hand over that. Now, just to be fair, you have to wear it in order for it to work. Mm-hmm. She got some bling. Okay, just want to make sure that you understand that. Okay, so I need to know: Do you do you look, do you like stare Doc in the eye as you take it? <laughs> nope, it's just the uh, as the description happens. She's just like she puts one hand over it while like, what about this wooden pole? Kind of thing. It's not subtle because Aurora is not that subtle. Like nobody grabbed for it initially, so she was like, eh, "Okay, I guess I'll kind of." Yeah, I guess I could use this to bribe my uh, girlfriend when she inevitably gets mad at me again in 20 minutes. <laughs> I saw you looking at this thing 20 minutes ago. Do you like it? I stole it for you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the last thing. He looks at the cat head, and he uh, he adjusts the monocle one final time, and it flashes this, this like burst of pink light down on it like a flashlight, and he kind of reels back for a second. He says... Now this is interesting. I've not seen one shaped like a cat's head before. They've always been shaped like elves or halfling heads with long, flowing locks. Very strange, although I suppose now it makes more sense that it's shaped like a cat. Um, this is, quite frankly, this is called a luck stone. It m is said to make the wearer very, very lucky once you attune to it. That's all I know. And just so anybody who is on the outside listening, uh, you must attune to it. It is an attunement required item. However, when you do so, you gain a plus one to all, all ability checks and all saving throws. Full stop. Gray, I think you should take that one. It sounds to me like a symbol of Garl. Seems like you should have it, Doc. I have a lot of luck. Girl, you will turn down me. more. I agree turn with the word. You should take it. Sling that pole. <laughs> God damn it, Kurt. Fine. Doc will grab the beautifully polished stone cat head. And besides, Don't you could use it as a reminder. Okay, yeah, so you can add that to your inventory then. Um, just add it as an item, Candice. Uh, it's, it is literally called uh, Stone of Luck or Luck Stone. It will need to be attuned, um, so that happens on a short rest. And then once you do so, it should change it, but literally all ability checks and all saving throws are plus one, which is stupid fucking powerful. Okay, I got it. Thank you. Mm hmm. All right, so. Um, Next up on the table was the ornate ceremonial dagger that she does not fully release unless he Make sure like, you reaches for it button. to, to identify it. Okay. It's the little checkbox. I was going to wait till we took officially. No, the just do it. Just do it. Okay. You guys will get there. Thank you. So he looks down at the dagger, he touches it. There's the flash of purple arcane energy. And he kind of leans down across the table and past Re. And he looks at Aurora and he says, I think maybe we should have a conversation, just the two of us at some point. And he slides the dagger back and he says, This is mundane. It's not about it. It's about you. She just does the tiniest little nod and then just resheathes it. Does not make direct eye contact. Okay, perfect. Holy shit, that changed everything. Oh my fucking god, Candace. <laughs> Sorry, I just looked at Candace's character sheet after she equipped that fucking thing and gave all the plus ones. I was like, Jesus Christ. That's pretty good. <laughs> In the arms of a glitter bride, 
I have no... Okay, sorry. Um, that's a lot. That's a lot of shit happening. That's a lot. Good lord. Officially the smartest in the group now. <laughs> Okay, so Xavier looks around at a lot of you and he says, uh, Does anybody have anything else that they need identified? Anything, anything anything, from the depths of your inventories that requires identification? You're what? getting hate from Cayman for singing that song. <laughs> are these... Are, are, <laughs> no more is this bracelet it. magical? And she'll That's show because her, it's for Harambe. That is exclusive to Harambe. With Electrum. I know it's not, but... Is this magical? And then, he, he glances he, down at it and he just kind of goes... Oh, Electrum. Ugh, who the fuck made that? Re, I would buy that off of you right now for 50 gold pieces. I would, maybe it's like a buddy band. You shouldn't wear Electrum. It just doesn't, it doesn't look good on you. Can I, can I purchase that for 75, 75 gold? 75 gold? Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, sure. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. He looks genuinely he looks excited. Genuinely excited. It, yeah, you sure? That's a lot, right? That's a good amount. That's a good amount. He, Unless you really care about it, it's a good amount. I don't really care, to be honest. I just, I just kind of wanted it, just to like, you know, impress all my, uh, all my goblin buddies back at home. When I showed up all fucking, you know, somewhere. glittering and shit. At this point, Xavier finishes counting out. He, it's seven platinum pieces and five gold, and he slides it over to you, and he says. I would truly love that bracelet. Oh, yeah, okay, there you go. All right, go ahead All and right. add 75 gold to your inventory. He takes the Electrum bracelet and then just go ahead and remove that. He does not put, it on, put wrist. it on his wrist. He slides it he into, slides a pouch into a pouch and it closes it. It's gonna burn that thing later. <laughs> oh, we're burning the Electrum. <laughs> uh, so wait, you said, was it seven platinum and then five yep. gold? Yep. yep, seven platinum, five gold. Good doing business with you. Thank you, dear. Xavier. Yes. I can't tell you how grateful we are. Uh, I, I know we're all very grateful that you're on our side and so willing to help and that you came here. And I mean, you gave us more of a lead than we had when we found everything out. So thank you. Of course. Look, at the end of the day, this is what friends are for. Right? You all confided in me. Even Bofa, that buffoon of a dwarf. The one time I had the pleasure of meeting him, confided in me the darkest and deepest secrets that existed within your own psyche. And although, yes, Grey, it took a little bit of work to get that out of you, you've done so much good for humanity and for Trubinshad as a whole, how could I not have confided in you and made sure that the fruits of your labor were capable of being tasted by the general populace? Now that I say that out loud, it sounds really creepy. And I'm kind of sorry about that, but no, it was it was it was uh, humbling. It was it was good. I'm not gonna lie, I had no idea how to respond to that. Thank you. It means a lot coming from you. Honestly, it does. Well, you're welcome. Is there anything that anybody here maybe needs to purchase? I would highly suggest not going out into the throng of Kerberg because of the way that he looks currently and your faces are recognized because you've kind of made a name for yourselves um but I can provide you if, if you need anything if you need to purchase anything uh potions, potions I'll, I'll let you I'll all let... discuss amongst yourselves um you tell me what you want to do and I will prepare all right potions. yeah I mean what do you what do you got you got a healing potions you got you got any go fast juice? You got any go big juice? I have all sorts of juice. Um, yes, so you're looking for. Listen, I had a taste of being big, and I want, and I, and I don't, and I want to, I want more. 
So, you said go fast, Juice. You talking about potions of speed? Sure. I have three. Oh. I'll sell them to, I'll you, sell for them to you for 400, 400 gold, gold apiece. Piece. Do we have that much? Just for, just for, just I one, I think. Oh, we're gonna... Did you give me 400 gold just a moment ago? No, he did not. Okay. Uh, nowhere near. No, sorry. My uh, I'm not great at math. She does not do the numbers. That's okay, she's <laughs> strong. She's very strong. She's strong, strong, strong as possible. Possible. <laughs> and she's also very fast, from what I hear. Fast as fuck boy. Actually, you know, you know, I was gonna say, she got her fast as fuck boy uh, title from... Uh, Middleton, when she was escaping the shit show with the the iron bands of Bod Bodelio, yeah, and then and then she and then she that's got strong as fuck boy. Yeah. Oh, was that strong as fuck? That's strong. where strong as fuck boy came from. Well, where the both. fuck did you get fast as fuck? It was oh, was it both? Was it was a double deal. <laughs> oh, that's. <laughs> oh shit! Out of me. out of character. That's also where she got breaker of chains. Yeah, that is also. <laughs> All right. All right. Um, so, uh, where, where were we? Uh, we were talking about uh, potions of speed. I have four potions of speed at 400 apiece. Uh, it's going to sound stupid, but I'm assuming it's just movement. Does it help uh, us move, or does it also help us attack faster? Oh, my goodness. What a stupid question. <laughs> on, on a side note, did anyone say they were going to pay for that? Or not yet? Not yet. I don't think that's been discussed yet. So he okay. says, so, he so says, what happens is for, so when you drink this potion, for one minute, you are affected as if some wizard or sorcerer had cast the haste spell on you. What happens while the haste spell is on you is this. And to switch to normal jibber jabber, um, you drink the potion and you gain a plus two bonus to AC. You have advantage on dexterity saving throws, and you gain an additional action each turn. That action can only be used to attack with one weapon attack, dash, disengage, hide, or use an object action. Full stop. However, when the potion runs out, you are affected by lethargy for one round, which means you are stunned for one round. The good thing, though, is that you, if you drink this potion, it is not concentration. It is ten rounds of extra fucking movement speed. Um, so, your, so your movement speed is doubled. You gain a plus two to AC. You have advantages on dexterity saving throws. You have an additional action each turn, only can be used for one attack. So if you have multi-attack like Re, you get three attacks, plus double... I mean, it's just... It's, it's fucking crazy. It's, it's honestly, and for, for it only being 400 gold, stupid good deal. I mean, I'm a huge fan of that. Uh, I know we're going to need some healings as well. Uh, uh, there, baby. I think uh, that my roll 20 stopped. Okay, there we go. Uh, I think Gray would kind of just um, put like his black pocket thing, ball, um, just kind of on the table uh, and just kind of say, I don't need it. Take what you want. There should be enough. Hopefully there should be a lot of money in there. Whoever wants it. Yeah, it's fireworks. Sorry, we have Sorry. a fucking we fireworks fire. show going up behind us, so. Oh, of course. <laughs> Welcome to Georgia. <laughs> no, it's anywhere, really. 
So, yeah, it's, you know what? That's true. I mean, it didn't matter. If we were in Illinois, Texas, it, it's nothing. Connecticut happens to, you know? Yeah. We were just trying to figure out what the fuck we were hearing. Yeah, I was <laughs> like, okay, am I hearing, like, because there's an Air Force base, are they doing gunship runs tonight and, like, training, or is it fucking... Yeah, we've got AC... Oh, anyways. Um, okay. So, Gray lays this, um, this orb on the table, and as he does so, it kind of flattens into a pancake, and then unfolds three or four times into about a five-foot uh, five circle. Um, and inside, as you guys all kind of look over the edge, it is fucking loaded with coins. I no longer have a need or use for this. Take what you want. I mean, don't be so down. I mean, we're gonna we're gonna fix this. We're gonna go smack goat fucker in the face, and then we're gonna fix it, and you're gonna have need for it. But I would like to take four hundred of those and throw it at <laughs> Xavier for some of the go fast juice. Yeah, the go fast juice. Gotta yeah. go. I gotta go. But you surviving is gonna help all of us, so there's no reason not to. Aurora's going to start just fidgeting with fire again as they're talking about their coin. All right, what about what about like all like the healing stuff like you got you got a lot of those cuz we're yeah, we're probably going to need a lot of that. If we're literally going to be walking on shards of glass, my girl. Uh, so Xavier says um well, to be fair, you shouldn't have to actually traverse along the, um, the the Razor Plains if you hug the Obsidian Spire Mountains. If you if you creep along its edge, you may actually be able to get to the um, to the entrance, anyways, of the layer that is um, Ferentide, But you're going to have to seriously stay close to it. However, without that being said, I, I mean, you're, look, if this entity is what I think it is, which is a dragon in nature, I, I think you may need it. Um, yes, healing potions, I, I have plenty of those. What, what size are you looking for? I guess, I guess maybe we'll start with, like, what, like, the biggest you got and work our way down. Right, so Supreme... Right. So, Supremes, I have three Supremes. I normally sell them for $13.50. I can sell them to you each for $1,100. Alright, so I have Supremes, um, I have Greatas, Greatas are easily, those are easy, 150 each. How much did you say each? 150 for Greatas. I also have Standard Healing Potions, which are... Fifty apiece. Um, and Re had said something about the growth healing potions, by the way, or the, the excuse me, the growth potions. Um, if you are interested in a growth potion, I only have one, but I, it is two hundred and seventy gold pieces. That sounds that sounds like a good number. It's not bad. All right. All right. Anything else? Any kind of like magical items you got in that bag? Oh, I've got shit loads. What are you looking for? Oh god, I don't know. Uh Anything maybe to to help us not die immediately from a creepy blind mole rat dragon? 
Hmm. Re, can you wield that weapon one-handed, or is it two-handed exclusive? Two-handed. Hmm, it's unfortunate. <sighs> okay, well... Doc, what kind of armor are you wearing? Is that chainmail, my dear, or is that leather? She looks down at herself. Uh, I'm wearing a chain, yeah, a chain shirt. We picked, we kind of picked it up somewhere. Yeah, you pick things up. Chain shirt. Mm -hmm. I happen to have a chain shirt with it, which has a basic wet, uh, armor enchantment on it, which um, allows you to essentially have the effect of wearing half plate. Um, but only having to put the chain on. And in layman's terms, just so we're all in uh, clarity's sake here, it, he has a plus two chain shirt. Oh. How much is how much is the shirt, just out of curiosity? 6,000 gold pieces. I have no idea how much money we have. Do we have well, I can, total? I can tell you now, I don't have, I don't have that. that. However... I can sell it to you for 5100 I'll give you a 15% discount. She'll kind of look around at the party. Um, and you're the one who brings us back to life. Yeah, but I'm also the one who lost all our money. So it's okay if we don't want to invest right now. I am I mean, I said what I said. You're the one who brings us back to life. I don't, yeah, I don't think you owe us a debt. <laughs> I am growing tired of watching you die and not knowing if you'll be able to come back to us. Same, yeah. <clears throat> That's sweet. Do we have uh, enough money to pay for that and also get other things for other people? Your bright eyes, how much do you have in there? Uh, allow me to quickly check the total of it in D&D &D Beyond. Okay, so, in in total, uh, I think, uh, Gray's gonna say, I think I have somewhere around almost 2,000 gold. 1,900, somewhere around there. We could get you the shirts. We would not be able to get a ton more than that. Let's see what else but, what else we can get for everyone and come back to it. Do we have we still any... have two healing potions? We have a greater and a normal. Are there any items that you have that you would like to not bring with you that I may be able to use as bartering tools? I would I would trade my javelin, but it's coming pretty good handy. <laughs> I could trade the javelin. I have a javelin of lightning. Javelin of lightning? Oh, that's a very rare item indeed. I could give you... I'd give you 1,500 gold pieces for it. I mean, to be honest, I really thought that... Uh, the last time I used it, I was a little worried that I was going to injure someone else. I don't necessarily need it. But it has saved your life. Saved all of her lives a couple of times. <clears throat> oh, I have this chain shirt in my old leather armor. How much would that give us, give us if we traded that to you? Can I be honest with you, my dear? I don't buy mundane items because yeah. I'm not a blacksmith or an armor smith. But that javelin of lightning, I'd even... I'll tell you what. Um... I'll give you a 15% increase on it. I'll buy it for 1725. Credit if you'd like. She's going to kind of look at Aurora. Aurora it appears to be looking off in the distance doing frantic calculations cuz I'm definitely not doing that. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Gray would kind of put down a, a potion of, um, it's a potion of invisibility, I can't describe it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, just tell me what it is and I can tell you exactly. I mean, this it's man, a potion he's, of invis it, yeah, he's not a stranger. <laughs> um, I don't think I'm going to have a use for this. Hmm. 
He says, well, it's not entirely uncommon. I can do 180 gold for the potion of invisibility. I can offer well, my, my invisibility up as well, if that helps. Well, I mean, we... A dragon, so... Just because this particular dragon can see regardless <laughs> of um, visibility doesn't mean that other things in the Underdark won't be able to. We he, al should... he also says, he sa just quickly, he interjects and he says, uh, actually, um, as far as the potions are concerned, I apologize, 180 is a little bit out of sorts, especially for what I can offer you. I'd say I can do 207 gold apiece. Well, we should have a little over the equivalent. We combine everything, we sh and assuming Bright Eyes is speaking truth this time, uh, we should have about 8,000 gold, perhaps a little bit more. So we could get you the chain shirts, we could get some of the potions of speed, we could probably get one of the supreme potions, or a handful of the smaller ones, and even and another most growth for Re. I don't, listen, I don't, worry, I don't really need the potion of speed. I just thought it'd be kind of cool. What if we got it as a celebration after successfully hunting down a uh, dragon, with a, a deep dragon? What, buy, buy the potion of speed now and save until after we kill the dragon? <laughs> I and then drink it. After and see how Just do a bump it. after you kill a dragon. Uh, drinking capabilities. <laughs> oh, yeah. I like it. Why are you starting it, Reed? Just yeah. drink it. Did Reed just boof that potion? Like, what the fuck? Why is she so excited? <laughs> We're over here theory crafting. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, I don't, again, I don't necessarily want to take anything away. Everything could be useful, but I... Uh, we could we can do that. We can do that if we want to. Okay, so why don't we do this? What do we want to purchase? Definitely a chain shirt. Okay, so the chain shirt. And I, I can keep her alive, man. I'll pull that uh, fifty one hundred from my uh, coin purse. Okay, well hold on before we get there. So I just want to know what we want to buy. So it's the chain shirt plus two, which I said was. Uh, Originally six sixty down to fifty one hundred. Yeah, so it's fifty one. So it's fifty one hundred. What else do we want to buy? <coughs> this is purchase. This is purchase, by the way. Yeah, if we if we have enough for speed, um, speed will be on the back on the back. Okay. Of this, this is lowest priority, but I'd say like probably supreme, right? Oh, okay. So okay, so, so a, one supreme, one or supreme three. Or three. How much were they per? They were 1100 He said 1100 a piece. If we were to get three, we would get... We would have nothing else, and we would probably be dependent on Xavier to uh, feed us until we left for the Underdark. That's not true. You guys have a lot of fucking macaroons because of a decision you yeah. made, Aurora, like 25 sessions ago. I have you know what? five of them. <laughs> Hey, I found the the meatloaf flavored macarons. <laughs> Salisbury steak. Oh, it's so bad. Oh, this is the black licorice one. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yay! My day's gonna go so great. No, it can only get better from here. Oh my god, is this is this the um the every the bean boozled but macaron? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I got I dog got poo. Dog. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we want a chain shirt. What else are we looking at, my friends? Potion. Wh the, which one? The Supreme? Speed. Supreme? Oh, sub speed oh, so potion? Speed potion? Speed's on the back burner. Speed's okay. on, like, the very end. If we have it's enough... Supreme. Yeah, Supreme. Okay, so let me ask, okay, you, so this. Let me ask you this. How many speed? How many speed? One? One? Yeah. I'd say, uh, I'd say one. Yeah, just one. And then Supreme, okay. probably like as many as we can, right? That's okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yep. 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 
Um, I am still holding a greater, a regular, and a superior. I have a superior as well. We I am not, holding not a, a greater and a regular. And a regular, yeah. I have two superiors and one regular. I mean, we're pretty good, good on health potions. <laughs> the Supreme is a good second. idea for three. So you want to, you want to call it one for re, or do you guys want to just keep it at three and then just divide it? It's thirty three hundred for the three. My vote would be one because uh, and a and a regular. Yeah, I agree. One and regular. Healer. Yeah. Okay, hold on. Okay. One regular, one supreme. Do you have anything that might be able to help us protect our psyches from? Magical or breath weapon and like a tinfoil hat or something. Well, I don't have a tinfoil hat, um, though I've heard of aluminium hats uh, being very successful in the past. But no, I have um, potions of resistance, and that would probably do the same for you. I can do them for three hundred gold pieces a potion, and I can. Customize it to however you'd like. How long do they typically last? Um. So typically, well, it, I mean, I suppose it always depends on the potency, but typically it's about an hour. Those yeah, so we maybe get, what, four of those and then pound them before we fight the dragon? That would be what I would think. Okay. So... I currently have the chain shirt with the plus two enchantment on it, one speed potion, one supreme healing potion, uh, one regular healing potion, and four potions of resistance. Is, is that what I'm understanding? With with the psychic subtype on it. Yes? Yeah, that sounds about right. All right. Give me yeah. a moment to do some math. And he starts immediately. The, the the quill that has been hovering over this paper starts to literally just bust out calculations. And you see a lot of negatives and a lot of discounts being applied. Give me one moment. You can talk amongst yourselves. I, I know that you all don't care, but I have to say I feel kind of guilty that we're spending so much money on a shirt. Okay, so uh, heal more. Need to stay alive. Yeah, you guys make that sound real easy. Well, this will help make it easier. Yeah. Besides, depending on how much all of this is, I may ask about arrows. I have heard that there are enchantments that can be placed upon them to help to help in the hunting of magical foes. That's a good idea. Also, Doc, and she like pauses in her fiddling with the, the flames. You're worth it. She immediately breaks eye contact and stares at the table. Yeah, she blinked first. That that means that means Aurora gets like a point or something. I don't know. It's somewhere. <laughs> she gets a macaron. Um, are we understood that you would like to trade the javelin of lightning and the potion of invisibility? Two potions of invisibility. I have one. <laughs> the javelin. Yeah. So, I'm sorry, you want to keep the Javelin of Lightning, is that correct? What am I understanding here? Just tell me straight. Do you guys want me to trade it, or do you want to hang on to it? 
I mean, if, if we if we if we don't have enough without you trading it, then I'd, I'd say you trade it. All right. So here's your numbers <clears throat> for one plus two chain shirt, one potion of speed, one potion of supreme healing, one potion of regular healing, and four potions of psionic resistance. We are looking at 7,031 gold pieces total. And that is including Mr. Gray and Ms. Ree giving me their potions of invisibility. If Doc also decides to give me the Javelin of Lightning, we are looking at 5,306 gold pieces even as a trade. By the way, that also, if you have done the math yourself here, would lead you to understand that there was a 15% discount on all of the healing potions, all of the supreme potions, all of the speed potions, the chain shirt, and the potions of resistance. I give you a discount on everything. Thank you. Thank you later. I don't know what our total is. Do I need to trade the javelin or not? She's just like ready to pull it off her back. We have two options here. It's either 7,031 gold pieces and you keep the javelin. Or you give me the javelin and you pay me 5,306. Mr. Gray? Ms. Aurora? It's so, Kat, I'm going to tell, tell you straight up. I have 1,925 gold. If Bright Eyes is willing to throw in what, what he's got, then you can keep your javelin, Doc. What was it? 1,900 on what? 25. 25. Alright, Lucy, go ahead and remove 1,925 gold pieces from your black holes um, inventory. And we are now due 3,381. Which I absolutely have. 3,381. Go ahead and remove that. Okay, so going down the line, Candace, you can add a plus two chain shirt to your inventory. Plus two chain shirt. And what did you have equipped, by the way? I just had a regular chain shirt. Just a regular chain, chain, shirt. chain shirt? Go ahead and take um, four gold. Add four gold to your personal inventory for that. He'll take it. So you can just delete that. Add a plus two. Okay. Re, add a potion of speed to your inventory. As well as a potion of supreme healing to your inventory. I don't know who was taking the potion, the regular potion of healing, but whoever was missing that, uh, can we just clarify who that was? Potion of regular healing. Who was going to take that? I have one. I have one. I also have one. So bag of holding, holding one? Aurora or bag of holding, sure. Yeah, they can bag of holding. Okay, Aurora, um, go ahead and add an additional regular healing potion to your in to your bag of holding inventory. And then everybody take a potion of psychic resistance or a potion of resistance. And then if you have to add a um, like a custom note to it, just put psychic so you know exactly you know what exactly. it's resisting. They have a they have a psychic resistance. Oh well, that's even better. Should plus two chain shirt just be a thing, or do I have to make a custom item? Um, give me one second, Candace. Mm -hmm. It's a very good question. It should just be a thing, but sometimes it's very specific about how you look it up. Yeah. So you may have to look it up as chain shirt. Yeah, that's what I looked up, and I see a bunch of magic items, but I'm going to say plus two. Uh, it, there is one. You just type in chain shirt, and then you'll find plus two at, like, the bottom. You have to click that. Oh, load more. Got it. Thank you. All right, I'm good. Thank you. Sorry about I, you know, it's so funny. You said, oh, I just found it. I swear to God, I was just like, oh, I got it. Not chain mail. Chain shirt. Yep, chain plus shirt. Two. I got it. Yep. Thank you. And that should be purple. You got it? Yeah. Okay. Just so everybody knows, that was a good purchase. Holy fuck. Did that just bring your AC to 18? Oh, yeah. my God. Oh, my God. What the fuck, dude? 
Even with your shield, 18? 18 with my shield. <laughs> did you keep the javelin nice. or no? I did. Yeah. You did, yep. So you do have that. Holy fuck, man. Okay. I will remove my potion of invisibility. Thank you. I did the same, yeah. Thank you. That was everybody or just those two? I don't remember. Nope, just those two. It was literally, they were the only ones who offered it up. Xavier had a lot of shit. I mean, he's got a bag full of shit. If you guys got stuff you want to fucking... I, I still if you guys money. got stuff you want to sell, he is literally... I mean, he just told you, like, yo, that Javelin of Lightning, I'll take 1,500 gold, whatever you want, I'll take it. The Javelin is still up if we need to buy something else, and I have my Potion of Invisibility as well. I have a feeling it's not going to do any good against the dragon itself. It might be useful to be invisible in the Underdark, but... You can be invisible and make noise and stuff will still find you, so, um, you know, just if there's something else we need, let's do it. We can't take this to the grave with us, you know? It's it's a morbid way to think, but it's the way we have to think right now. Doc, Doc, it's okay. We're, we're not broke. It's okay. I always feel broke. Yes, that is because you don't get to hold money anymore. That is true. Until you go, like three consecutive weeks without dying, then maybe. I don't want that responsibility ever again. It is all yours. I would like you to have the responsibility of going three consecutive weeks without dying. Oh, I just meant the money. Yeah, I'd rather not die. Yeah, <sighs> yeah well, if, if you are all right with it, who looks around the group, I'm going to see if does have anything that may help aim or perhaps sight. I'm getting a little tired of stumbling around blind. Oh uh, yeah, maybe he's got some like some glasses for you or something. That is one thing that I miss. I can't I can't, I can't see can't. as well as I used to be able to. So like how dark is the under dark i mean like are we talking about like fucking pitch black all the time always Sun Sun never never read. Read. <laughs> xavier laughs he says some of those creatures have never seen the light of day so the eyes are nothing but moonlight it's very dark now so, now yeah do you have any like glasses in there to help uh, aurora see in the dark. I may actually give me one moment. Aurora has that like stubborn pride expression where she's like, "Yeah, I know this is a problem, but I don't want to like focus on it anymore." But like, damn it, it's that expression. I'm sorry, but that that you stumbling around in the swamp that was that was hard to watch. Excuse you, I seem to remember helping lead even while being partially blind. I mean, kind of. He helped, the pokey stick helped. Yes! The pokey stick <laughs> always helps. The pokey stick always helps. Uh, do you want... I mean, do you want to not see in the dark? I mean, I... She just shuts up and turns to Xavier. <laughs> we definitely won that. Doc pretends not to notice that Re won. I don't know if, if Xavier doesn't have anything, then Aurora's just gonna have the internal, like, oh no, I guess Doc has to hold my hand again. So he, oh, no. he, he kind of blinks a couple times and he kind of looks down at his bag and he goes, shit, I thought. I thought I had goggles in here that. Oh, fuck. I'm I'm so sorry, Aurora. Um, I have these these things that are called the goggles of minute seeing, but it only allows you to look at things that are really close up to you. They're like little fancy monocles that you hold up. I also have these things that are called um, the eyes of owl sight, but it only allows you to see things that you can normally see, but from great vision. So if you cannot normally see in the dark, it unfortunately does not. Grant you the thing to see in the dark. Um, 
It's all right. I made do without in the swamps, and I will make do without now. No! Uh, stop! Wait a minute. I have something for you. Oh, they are gaudy as shit. They are terrible looking. Have you ever heard of the goggles of night? I'll take the silence as a no. We weren't exactly uh, in possession of a great many magic items in my past life. So, the short of it is, these things look tacky as shit. Um, they look like an owl's frame with a little beak and blue, like, azure gem lenses. But if you look through them, you have the equivalent night vision of, let's say, a dwarf. Uh, uh, only while you are looking through them, of course. <laughs> he says specifically. How much are these... I can sell them to you for 1300 gold pieces even what do we need I mean we mm, we have more than enough for them but okay well but, then it's done because you're worth it right keep mm, that's not me. If you can't see, you can't He slaps see. him on the yeah, table. As he slaps him on the table, you guys can well, now guys see can just now how see gaudy, they how gaudy they are. <laughs> oh my god, the beak. A lot. Somebody's grandma from 1996 is wearing these to a casino. <laughs> it's probably my it's grandma, grandma, honestly. <laughs> Is the beak really necessary? I mean, come on. Clearly, it is. 1300, you say. Start counting coins, Aurora. I love this. <laughs> Best day. So, Aurora is so torn at the moment, and her expressions are just very obvious. She's, on one hand, she doesn't want to put those things on her face. On the other hand, this is the first time Doc hasn't been angry or very sad. So, like worse um but she's gonna grumbling grumbling all the while just reach for the coin purse but then pause do you happen to have any of the enchanted arrows i've heard so much about i unfortunately don't my lover in Sindrian uh, and I have not been in contact in quite some time and he's the one who typically makes my arrows um, and I have had a great deal of them in the past but um, there have been a number of rangers who have come from the northeastern quadrant of Trubenshad and up from the southeastern quadrant of Trinity demanding these magically enchanted arrows as if they were going to the fucking hells to fight demons but no long story short i don't have any i don't have any i don't have any magical arrows i'm sorry but would you like these beautiful owl goggles oh you got to take them so here's the thing though the um the enchantment the the, the nature of their enchantment you have to call them googles <laughs> Google goggles. <laughs> she mutters something that is very obviously. I think I'd rather be blind. He kind of rears back for a second, and then hands them out and says, "Just finish counting out the coins. They'll allow you to see in the dock." I'm just, I'm just being silly. This is Doc's face. Yeah, Aurora's gonna count out thirteen hundred coin. Um, this is a lot of silver, though. Okay. Even great. I like a slight smile. So, Aurora, so Aurora please remove just that. Remove that out loud at the goggles. <laughs> <laughs> As Xavier, one of the stupidest things I've ever seen. <laughs> Xavier slides them over past Re, and even Xavier whispers, "Like, oh, they're terrible, aren't they?" Over to Aurora. 
and Aurora, you take the goggles. Um, you have not, they're literally just called goggles of night. Um, you have a six, while you pull them down, you have a, well, I shouldn't tell you, you play another character who has these same fucking magic item because Yeah, but they you, work for Sybil. I know, like, it's because you play characters that don't have dark vision, but need I the dark. Not. No, <laughs> I know, I know, I'm fucking with you, I'm fucking with you. <laughs> uh -uh. This is oh, weird. she got so defensive. <laughs> but you got better that way. <laughs> That's true. Nope, no, okay. no, 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 that's all your fault. Yeah, but it yes, is. I'm it here is. with these god-awful hideous goggles that are okay. so useful. So you have, you have goggles of night, and please just, uh, I, I won't, um, I don't have it pulled up on my end, but just take away the uh, 1,300 gold on your end. All right, good. Um, okay. It was most of our gold that was remaining, and then several thousand silver. Perfect. Well, put them on, Aurora, so we can make sure that they fit. <laughs> It is awfully bright in this room for no, that. Oh, it'll be fine. Put him on. She's not me. wrong. It is pretty bright in here. Xavier oh, kind of no. leans down and over and says, Oh, I think you'd look great as an owl. Maybe a hawk. Or something with talons. I don't know. Or like a pigeon. Here, so she... Oh, pigeon! <laughs> so when he says that, yeah. <laughs> Some things can't be unheard. <laughs> Xavier leans over and looks at Aurora and says, I think I need another quick sober. She put fire belly in the ale and I'm not having a good time. I think I'm going to throw up. <laughs> oh, I see lady. I see lady. Oh, she's licking oh, she's hands lick and arms. And arm. Oh, because I started... Because I started laughing so hard. She was like, are, like are you okay? <laughs> Mama, are you having a bad time? Not yet. Put on the goggles. Are you, are you having a great time? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, I remember now. Uh, yeah. When... When Xavier makes the comments about the like better with talents and stuff, she just kind of raises one of the clawed hands and like kind of does the like the claw extendy thing, and just I have that covered. He shuts the fuck up, and he <laughs> retreats back into his chair ever so slightly and just kind of, huh? Okay. And goes about the rest of this transaction. He scoops the rest of the crap that he has out on the table, by the way, into his bag. Um, he kind of uh, cinches it up. He looks out at the rest of you and he says, Well, I think maybe we should have a conversation about this tomorrow morning. Enjoy yourselves for tonight. Um, by the way, I've rented you a room in the back of the establishment. Um, oh, if you're no, interested... Sure. Yes, no, just look. Stay here. Do your thing. Please don't get yourselves into any trouble. Don't don't leave the confines of the establishment, and um, we'll we'll pick up in the morning and see where we want to go. If you yeah, well. and your companions, excuse me, sorry, Doc. If you and your companions want to go straight to the Underdark, I can take you there. If you decide that is not what you want to do. I can take you there when needed, and I have time right now in my schedule to allow for that to be any time you need. So you tell me. Is that understood? Thank you. We, we do have one thing we have to do first, and then I think that's going to be our focus. So uh, she'll reach into her bag and take out a gnomish macaron of the mango variety, and she'll hold her hand out and say whenever you're hungry it might help soak up some of the fire belly but here i know you'll appreciate this that's so sweet my dear and he slaps it into your hand and uh he he, he grabs it from your hand as that happens doc make an insight check holy shit that's the first time i've had to roll something tonight that's an 11. With my plus seven. I rolled... I rolled a six! Oh, excellent. 
So he slaps he slaps your hand, he takes the macaron, and as he does so, he pulls it back over to himself. You already look up, and he's eating it, and you look down at your hand, and you're like, what the fuck? You have a platinum piece in your hand. Oh. Just nonchalant. Just one plat. Go ahead and add it to your inventory. All right. No, so we talk will... not a lot of money. Go away. <laughs> I know. I know. I have to hand it over immediately. Vow of poverty, paladin. Um... <laughs> Very cool vow, by the way. If anybody plays Paladin in the future, take a vow of poverty. Super cool vow to take. I did. It was just for, very for role. Yeah, it, it's super cool role playing uh, experience. Okay, it's after ten, my friends. So we will end here for tonight, and we will pick up next week. Uh, we will pick up right where we're at. You guys have just finished transactions with Xavier. He is kind of bidding you farewell, bidding you adieu. Um, and then, if anybody wants to have interpersonal um connection or rp moments we can go into that next week if not we just pick up and sake of brevity to wherever we want to be next week we don't do that here we don't do that here uh okay but no, on a serious note anybody who wants to uh do what they want to do just think about it through the week and then we'll pick up next week and do it and if not that's fine too uh otherwise we'll see you guys We'll see you guys through the week. Also, by the way, we have a shitload of birthdays coming up this week. Um, we do, yeah. Like an absolute fuckload of crazy birthdays. And if I'm not mistaken, Lucy has his birthday Say this week too. Oh, hey. Yeah. Hang on, I'm pulling up my calendar. So, Seru's birthday is on the 15th. My youngest sister's birthday is on the 16th. Lucy's birthday is on the 17th. And Whimsy's birthday is on the 18th. Yeah. And, yeah, we had two birthdays this past week, two birthdays the week prior, and the week after all of these crazy four birthdays, my grandfather turns 83, which is yeah. pretty fucking hardcore. All right. Anyways, we'll see you guys soon. We're going to go ahead and, uh, yeah, we're going to go ahead and raid. I don't know. Who, who I, are we going to raid? I have a concern. Uh-oh. Oh, my said concern. A concern? Yes. My concern is that we must wait almost a full week, and this is this is just the great standard. And the winding down. This is I have many yeah. many winding down. What did Make you say? Sad. I didn't hear it. Oh oh oh! Sorry, I apologize, you guys. I had I had um, I had the Twitch shit screaming in my ear. Oh. I had to have Candace um, iterate it to me. So you're sad about the... Uh... She said that she has to wait a week for D&D, &D, pretty much. Oh, for D&D. And the campaign's winding down. This one shot. Like, I, I the... don't want it to be a one shot here. The one shot is... And I know you guys all saw my message. The one shot is indeed winding down. I Look, I could only write so much for something that started as a one shot. And then you guys blew my fucking mind for a year <laughs> and like eight months. And I was like... Oh my god, I have to write story for all these guys' weird shit that they want to do. It is coming to an end, and that's really sad. But I, So my opinion, if I am seeing it from the DM perspective, would say that I think we have maybe seven or eight sessions left. Sessions, meaning three hours. So like 21 to 25 hours worth of game before this story is officially at an end. Now, yeah. if you guys decide to do something fucking crazy with that and extend it by another 40 hours, then it is what it is. Look at what happened in Underhill, because what you guys did in Underhill, I had no plans for. <laughs> so, except for the Jarat. Time really to burn this motherfucker to the ground. <laughs> yeah. Oh, guess we're burning Kerber to the fucking ground and yeah. looting everything up in Pinot. Uh, I have to tell you, we have an Aladorn all lurking. Oh, do we really? Hey, it's funny we're yeah. just talking about him. Hell yeah! <laughs> oh, he, he messaged me the second the stream dropped earlier. Oh, yeah? I, like, oh, yeah, I know. It'll be up in a minute. We were just talking about him. I think it was yesterday. We were just Literally yesterday, about yeah, because uh, Kyleen was... Uh, she had sent me a few messages, so I was like, Hey, how are you and Al doing? We miss you. We're glad you're here. All right, so uh, Hex, I know, was on... Yeah, and I see I see Polsky just started... Um, oh, he just started streaming. Polsky, and he's playing Daisy. 
Chicky. Chicky. Oh no, Chicky's got three. Let's let's live. Yeah. I, so we, if I'm not mistaken, we rated Chicky last night. We did. We had to. But bail right away. we're gonna do Chicky tonight again. I yeah. think. I, I I do truly believe that. Okay. Yep. I think so. So we're gonna raid Chicky. Uh, for those of you who are here right now, um, thank you for hanging out with us. And for those of you who are in Discord with us, thank you guys. We'll see you next week. And uh, yeah, just think about where we're going, where you are going with uh, with you know the wherever uh, i'm going i'm going with an 18 ac now I, well, yeah fuck me <laughs> you guys are the worst you guys are the worst party i've had because your acs and hp averages and like <laughs> resistances and shit i'm just like i don't even know what to fucking do with you guys anymore i i like that i single-handedly drop the average literally literally not just that, but you know what's even funnier? I say, oh, by the way, this dragon has this weird spore breath that it does psionic damage with, and Ree's like, oh, no, I'm not resistant to that. <laughs> <laughs> the one thing. For the first time in 85 fucking sessions. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, but we were, we were strategizing and buying things. It's weird. This group has been proactive about stuff. I don't like it. D&D &D groups <laughs> aren't supposed to do smart. That's true, and to be honest with you, you guys have been extremely intelligent with how you've operated. Um, and I mean, the, the the whole I mean, honestly, even like last session and the session before with Nothraxian and the hungry, or I'm sorry, the uh, so it was the angry, so it was the wretched, the angry, and then Nothraxian. That fight, you guys like six rounded that entire series of fights. And that didn't make any sense to me because um, you should have been, you know, two rounded by that series of enemies. But you showed up prepared. <gasps> you showed up very best, prepared. Best help hold monster spell ever, dude. That hold my that oh, hands down was MVP. Oh <laughs> yeah. Yup. That was I've MVP two, for I've the had whole. Two great spell moments. Um, <laughs> one was the bane on um, in the druid's grove, on you the, the bear. That's true. You had three because you, you captivated our bard, bard once. Oh, you mean I? Did, I yeah, wait, what? Yourself oh. With your oh. <laughs> oh, she yeah, just trolled true. the fuck out of you. <laughs> All right. Uh, three then, and then now it's the whole monster. All right, guys, we're going to raid Chicky for tonight. Um, we'll see you next weekend, and yeah. thank you all for being here. Also, as we creep closer to the end of um, d d if you all have any ideas or interests or um, things that you want to happen or ideas that you want to explore on before we go into like the true tail end of the campaign send me a message and we'll work yeah. on um we'll work on getting it there if not are you? we'll How see you guys next week <laughs> all right good night everybody